next we're going to hear from Jose Socars, a junior and an art major here at Berea College with a uh, concentration in sculpture. Uh, now Jose was able to apply that concentration here on our very own Berea College campus in some undergraduate sculpture research. So let's give it up. told you that I could read your minds. I'm going to say a phrase, and when I say this phrase, I want you all to memorize the first image that comes to your head. Are you all ready? Yes. Okay. My name is Jose Sicaris, and I am a sculptor. Now, chances are, this is probably the image that probably came to your head. <laughs> okay, maybe that's a little bit extreme, but how about something like this? <laughs> Okay, maybe this isn't exactly what you thought of, but I know that every time I call home and tell my parents that I am a, uh, I'm a studio art major with a concentration in sculpture, this is what they think I do. With that being said, hello everyone, my name is Jose Sicaris. I am a junior here at Berea College. I am a studio art major with a concentration in sculptures, and I am part of EPG's cohort 6, 15. And uh, this summer, I, okay, I am originally from Camaway, Cuba, by the way, but I've grown up in Louisville, Kentucky for most of my life, so that's just some context. And this week, and this summer, I had the opportunity to spend eight weeks uh, alongside Professor Dan Feinberg and Megan Doherty and my fellow colleague Sophie Bell conducting undergraduate research here in Berea College. And before I hop into this presentation, I want to tell you all that this summer was incredibly interesting and motivating, but it was also somewhat serious at times and even emotionally draining as well. However, before I hop into my actual presentation, I want to talk to you all even more about my initial search for what I consider to be an incredibly impactful summer. So I knew that I wanted my internship to be around something that I'm really, truly passionate about, which is art, art, and art. Although I'm a sculpture concentra or my concentration is in sculptures, I wasn't really searching for something just within sculptures. I was open to any and all types of art internships. I just knew that I wanted an art internship. <clears throat> so in the beginning, I wasn't really specific about what type of internship I wanted. However, I realized really early on into my internship hunt that not being specific about what I wanted was actually making the search much more difficult. I was finding all sorts of incredible opportunities and experiences for the summer, but when it came time to apply for them, I was finding myself with a lack of motivation and questioning if I actually wanted to do these experiences. I mean, imagining myself for a whole summer doing something that I wasn't passionate about truly mortified me. That's why I decided to sit down and do some reflection. What am I truly passionate about? Yes, I'm passionate about art, but what within art motivates me to create it? So I decided to take a couple of days of reflection, and within those couple of days, my sculpture professor, Dan, approached me and told me about the amazing research he was doing and the summer opportunity, opportunity he was creating out of it. And so I was very interested in the beginning, but I wasn't immediately pulled in, and I wanted to give myself a few more days of reflection. And that's when it all happened. Everything clicked, and I reminded myself of why art is so special to me. When I was a young boy, and I arrived from Cuba, and I was put into school, I didn't really know English all that well, so I couldn't communicate with the kids in my class. And naturally, this creates a sense of isolation and loneliness, and I felt as if I had no voice. So every single day, I would go home crying and complaining and fussing to my parents about how I didn't have any friends at school and how I felt so lonely and how I felt invisible. <clears throat> so my dad, who was a skilled ceramicist in Cuba, but was, uh, was, but was working a landscaping job here in the United States to support our family at the time, would let me sit in the backyard in his studio and, and note his studio was a small little family room extension that we had in the back of our, of our yard. And he'd let me sit in the studio with him, and he would let me draw while he worked on his pieces. And eventually, I got really good at drawing superheroes and fast cars and dinosaurs. And so in turn, I actually used these skills to allow me to make friends in school. Although I couldn't verbally communicate with the kids in my class, I could still communicate with them through art. Art was a medium that gave me a voice. So I was reminding myself why art was so special to me, and I also, I reminded myself of why art was so special to me, and because art gave me a voice. And I also wanted to partake in Dan, partake in Dan and Megan's research this summer, because I felt like it would not only give me a voice in something that I'm passionate about, but it, it would also allow me to give voice and agency to groups of people who might not necessarily have it. And so this summer, we, 
The topic was understanding decolonization, specifically through the reinstallation of the Berea College presidential portraits. So, first off, what is decolonization? Well, by definition, decolonization means the action or process of a state withdrawing from a former colony, leaving it independent. So essentially what this means is that you're taking, that you're addressing the colonizing entity, you're withdrawing its power, and then you're returning that power to those who have been colonized. And like I mentioned, we're doing this through the reinstallment of the Berea College presidential portraits. And just to give you an example of what some of the portraits look like, from left to right is President William Hutchins, President Frost, and then President Stewart. Our, our nine presidential portraits depict powerful white men, some of which have had complex histories in the college's past. And these portraits being hung up in the space that they're in can create a somewhat uncomfortable and unwelcoming atmosphere for students in that space. And it gives them some sort of inherent power and status over that space as well. And although our presidents were not part of the Confederacy and did not own slaves, this part is still important on Berea College's campus. Through interviews conducted by Dan and Megan, uh, they concluded, the research concluded that some students, faculty, and staff do feel unwelcome and uncomfortable in the spaces where these portraits are displayed due to the power dynamic and the hierarchy that they represent. <clears throat> now, we weren't necessarily looking to just take down the portraits and sort them away, thinking that this would magically solve the problem. In fact, we weren't even looking for one specific uh, way to reinstall the presidential portraits. Instead, we were looking for several different proposals for installations that would help to create dialogue for reinstalling our presidential portraits, as well as portraits in, on other campuses and spaces nationally and globally as well. And just to give you an example of what one of our installations is going to look like. This is actually part of what's going to be a larger installation. Um, so we're going to have a, uh, an artificial wall. We're going to build an artificial wall. And this artificial wall will have four slots. And in these slots will go what you see here, which will look as if it's just part of the wall when it's in the wall. Except these slots will have uh, four presidential portraits on each of them, or one presidential portrait on each of them. So there will be four slots in total. As you can see, here's the frame for one of the portraits that we were testing. And so, what we're trying to aim with this installation is to give the observer agency. People will be able to pull out these slots from the wall and move them wherever they want. Some people might think, oh, this doesn't bother me. I'm going to surround myself with all the portraits. While others might say, hey, this kind of does bother me and I feel unwelcome, so I'm just going to face it into the corner. So even though the portraits are still hung up on the wall, the observer is being given agency to do as they please. And my whole summer actually didn't really consist much of studio work. It consisted more of research within the archives and research within online databases and interesting books. And so this is actually where I experienced myself using a lot of the EPG abilities that I learned in the previous summer. The first thing, engaging complexity and uncertainty. Now, when I first was told about the project, I, I thought that I was already really familiar with the, with the concept of decline or the topic of decolonization. And so I wasn't... I, I jumped into the research thinking that it was going to be linear from point A to point B. But boy, was I wrong, and I was caught off guard. Early on into the research, I realized that decolonization is a much heavier topic that requires a lot of extensive unpacking and researching and able to, in order to, for me to be able to actually work on this project because it's such a sensitive and charged topic. <clears throat> and so I decided that during the first week, I was going to act as a sponge and soak up everything that I could about decolonization and the contemporary issues related to it. We would have discussions and I would do my best to take notes and I would go home and find myself reading those notes and just trying to do research outside of the actual research so that I could give my absolute best not only to myself but for my team and the project. Secondly, I found myself advocating for change a lot. So since our research was under Berea College's URCPP, which essentially stands for Undergraduate Research and Creative Product Program, um, we had to do a 15 minute presentation midway through the, through the summer that explained our research. And so I was really nervous about presenting um, on decolonization. It's, it's, as you all may know, it's a really charged topic. But I knew it was a really great chance to express to people why our research mattered. So I took this opportunity, me and Sophie prepared a presentation in which we spoke about why our research mattered. And we created a sense of urgency. We wanted to give everyone a sense of urgency to not only explain to them that this isn't something that just me, Dan, Megan, and Sophie were working on. This is something that's a global issue. And lastly, I found myself recognizing opportunity a lot throughout the summer. As I previously mentioned, me and my partner Sophie had to create a 15-minute presentation to present to the other groups who were doing the undergraduate and research, the URCPP program. 
So a lot of these groups were doing really great, really great presentations and research themselves, but a lot of these groups were focused on science-related topics. So me being an art major and Sophie being a TAD major, we were a tad bit confused when it came to listening to the presentations. And this isn't to discredit them, they had wonderful presentations. Me and Sophie just had uh, a lack of context and a lot, lack of basic understanding of concepts that they were already familiar with. So that's when me and Sophie decided that our presentation was surely going to create confusion if we didn't explain it well enough. That's when we decided to meticulously, that's when we, that's when we decided to sit down and meticulously plan our presentation in a way that we would be able to navigate the complexities of decolonization while also making sure to use inclusive language and allow uh, and be able to explain it better for everyone else. So what, how am I using these experiences? Uh, how am I using these experiences now? What's next? Well, I'm actually not done, not technically finished with my undergraduate research. I'm still actively working with Dan, Megan, and Sophie as a part of a directed study to further our research as well as to further the fabrication of our installations that will be displayed in our exhibition, which I'll mention a little bit later on. And I'm also a TA for a dance sculpture class, so I get the best of both worlds. I get research work and studio work, which is what I really enjoy. But I also want to give some advice to the net, to the EP, to everyone in the room, but specifically to EPG Cover 16, because they'll be looking for their DFE internship soon. So, some advice. First off, know what you want. Be specific about what you want, because not only will this save you time, but it's also going to prevent you from jumping into an experience that you're not going to, to enjoy. And remember what I mentioned, you don't want to do a whole summer doing something that you're not enjoying. Secondly, be a sponge. Oftentimes we go into situations thinking that we know plenty about it, but the truth is there's always more to learn. Always go into situations with a beginner's mindset. Act as a sponge. And lastly, always give your absolute best. As I mentioned previously, this will help save time and it will, and it will also help distinguish you amongst others and you will also be able to give 100% to the product that, you, that you're working on. So this summer was an incredible opportunity, and I'm really happy that I was able to work with Dan, Megan, and Sophie as part of this amazing product, and I feel that it's, it kind of steered me in the right direction as to what I want to do with my art career and what I want my art to be focused on. However, I think for next summer, I want to go somewhere beyond Berea. Berea was amazing, but I feel as an artist, it's, it's important for me to uh, travel new places and gain exposures to new people and ideas, so I believe that next summer I want to be I want to go somewhere. I want to find. This, I want to find a DFE experience that will take me, maybe across the country or even across the globe. And before I end, I just want to show you the dates for our uh, exhibition. It's October 28th through December 13th, and the title is "Sharing Space with Authority: Proposals for Installing the Berea College Presidential Portraits." Any questions? to the people who are affected by these portraits. 
And so, like I said, we're not trying to erase history per se or disrespect the portraits in any way. We're trying to simply find like a midway point where we can allow both sides to have time, like to have the ability to, to act. I hope that answers your question. I'm really bad at questions. No, you go. Yes. So I know that you well, I know you personally, and I was just wondering because you said that you're changing your personal art style, and I was just wondering if this um internship or project had any influence on that decision? Yeah, definitely. So for a long time, I didn't really know what I wanted my art to be focused on. And I feel like as an artist, I don't want to say it's crucial to find your niche, but I think it's important to find what, what motivates you, what makes you tick, and what um, like just makes you want to create art. And for me, I think after doing this, I realized that I want to use my art to act as a way, or I want to use my art as a way to help people. So maybe like I think I want to do something social justice related with my artwork and something like that. Thank you for the question. Any more questions? Yes, please. Uh, I think it's really easy to assume that Berea is a really progressive campus, and so my question to you is, how did you deal with any like, like did you have any unexpected backlash um, because this is such a progressive project? I don't want to say we had any unexpected backlash per se. Personally, I I didn't see I didn't witness any. Um, but that was a question we brought up a lot when we spoke together in our, in our group, and we, we decided that we want to use inclusive language. As I mentioned before, me and Sophie sat down and meticulously planned this, planned this presentation to where we would be using inclusive language. We didn't want to isolate separate groups, because if you isolate groups, they're not going to listen. You know, someone that might be progressive will definitely be all ears, and someone who's a little bit more, you know, on the other side might not pay much attention because they're going to immediate, immediately block off if we, if we don't use the appropriate language to address the situation. So we were just making careful sure not to isolate anyone. Thank you very much, Jose. <laughs> and now for our final speaker, I'd like you to join me in uh, welcoming Rafi Ray, who traveled to New York and worked with Morgan Stanley. Rafi is a senior and a computer science major. Let's give it up.